there. This is Infinite Secor Ministry. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk a little bit about music and the occult with heavy emphasis on Taylor Swift and um, a few other artists like Beyonce and things like that. Um, the We'll go ahead and start with prayer and then and then go into why we believe this is such a important topic in our world right now. I'll start with prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, Lord, we come before thee this day and thank you so much for all of our blessings. We thank you for this new year, 2024. We thank you for your protection. We thank you that you are in control and that in you we can find direction and guidance in all things. Father, we pray a special prayer for the children around the world, for the world in general. We are getting so lost in the occult messaging that is happening all over. And we need more than ever the word of God, the Bible, which was made flesh in Jesus Christ. May we study your son, Lord, so that we can come to know your goodness and your character. And in that, we can decipher the difference between you and righteousness and fallenness and Satan. Father, please bless us with your Holy Spirit and guide us. Please reach the people in the audience and just people around the world. May we all come together in prayer and together overcome through the Holy Spirit, the powers of darkness. We love you, Lord, and thank you for all you've done for us. Jesus, thank you for giving your life for us for your perfect character, and for the salvation from sin and eternal life. In you, we have all things. And we say these things humbly in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. So I'm very passionate about discussing this today because Taylor Swift was, you know, I was pretty godless for most of my young adult life. And Taylor Swift used to be someone that in my judgmental, um snob days <laughs> i she she drove me nuts and then um she was like too vanilla for me and then around the shift in my life she started to put out a few songs that i kind of started to like but in general i just taylor swift wasn't an artist that i really cared for very much and um anyways and so i and then I kind of went to becoming a mother and my journey with the Lord and kind of pulled out of mainstream music and television and movies and all that stuff altogether. So it's been, you know, nine years or so since I've really even paid attention to mainstream or current things. So then I was at my parents' house and the news comes on and Taylor Swift is dating the football player or whatever. And now the whole football world and the news are enamored with this football player. I don't even know his name. Do you guys know his name? Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. And and here's my dad and my parents, who I don't even think they even really know much about Taylor Swift. They've seen her here or there. And we've all seen Taylor Swift in a concert or something back when she was like a country artist, right? And she seemed to take a long time to sell out to pop music. And um, she, you know, built a really good persona when she was younger to where people trust her and feel comfortable with their kids listening to Taylor Swift. I know so many people, Taylor Swift is just, you know, it's like totally seems fine and normal for your children to listen to her. So my dad's, you know, talking about, oh, Taylor Swift, she's a billionaire. And then, you know, Beyonce and, and her husband, they're billionaires too. And it's like, yeah, they are. But in this span of the last eight plus years, you know, I've learned a lot too. And as I learn, it helps me understand, you know, how things connect. And so anyway, so I was like, Taylor Swift, uh, I haven't watched a music video or anything in a long time. So I went and looked up a couple of her music videos because I was like, I wonder what she's up to lately, you know, and I was shocked. I was so shocked, especially after our video we did on um, yoga. So well, here, let me come share my screen. So on yoga, when you talked about Shiva and the snakes around the arm and the snake around the neck and the destroyer and all that stuff. Let me share my screen. And I want to just look at a couple photos and um, videos 
to show and just kind of walk through this progression of what I've kind of come to learn about Taylor and why these things can be so subtle and have such a deep effect. And the reason this is important is because Taylor Swift is all over everything. She has billions of followers, billions. That is, that is a chunk of the world. There are only 8 billion people in the world. So billions of followers, like that is substantial. And she is a huge influencer of young minds around the world. This is what our children are looking up to. This is what they are being fed. This is, and this is, and we should pay attention to our society, our people, what we are ingesting, what we're looking at, what we're hearing, what we're taking into our mind and our heart and notice how it's affecting things. And it wasn't until I came to read the Bible that I came to discern how so many things that are just seem kind of like part of the fabric of the life we live in, God says to stay away from. And there's a reason why it's for our protection. So let me figure out. I am not the smartest. I'm not the brightest crayon in the box, but somewhere here. Oh, here we go. Share. Okay. Share screen. Okay. Start broadcast. Two, one. Huh. Can you guys see my screen yet? Yeah. Okay. You can see it now? Okay, so right here, this was the first thing I saw. This is Taylor Swift's music video of Look What You Made Me Do. So I watched that video and, you know, I mean, the Garden of Eden, Satan comes in the serpent, right? So I feel like anyone can kind of catch that <clears throat> this is kind of pointing back to Satan. But in case someone can't, why would you be so covered with snakes? She has a snake around her neck. She has it all over her fingers. She has it serving her drink. She has it behind her head. She has it coming up the stairs. She has it around the lamps right there. Snakes everywhere. Up the chair. She is, she is drenched in snakes. Like there is symbolism here. And I just find it really fascinating and then let's go and while we're on this topic because this is what i found let's go to albums here we go so albums here we go so this is taylor swift's podcast logo wrapped in a snake oh, wow here is taylor swift's concert with a just snakes everywhere snakes there she is in that chair with the snakes around her finger around her neck here's more snakes 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 right so i was like okay taylor swift has obviously partnered with the serpent i.e satan in some way okay so to me that's like okay this is something that we should um oh no This is something that we should pay attention to. Now I want to just go and look at two other things really quick. So let's do um, Karma, Taylor Swift's one of her recent videos. Oopsies. Oh, and hold on one second. On this one. Look, that's 1.4 billion views on that video. This is what wow. children are watching. She has billions and millions, hundreds of millions, billions of views. That's a lot. So, and then Taylor Swift, one of her recent videos, just watched the first couple seconds on this one. So karma, we all, so, and in this video, she talks about how karma is a God basically, right? So here's this little... So that, if you want to believe that um, there's no foul play here or the snakes is just an artistic thing, like, mm -hmm. I don't think you can deny that there is some satanic stuff happening there and some play on God stuff, right? So the Bible is teaching us don't worship false gods. She's kind of putting herself as a God and you can just see, you can just see that 
she's not the good girl that she once was portrayed. She's going into some dark things and she's putting them into her music videos. It's very occult. Now, the last one I want to show really quick, and I didn't, it took me a minute to stumble up, upon this. Um, but this, let's see. Oh, no, no. La, 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 la. Okay. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Let's see. It's the video that I shared. However, I'm not seeing it. So let's do Swift Willow. Okay, so that's really all that we need to see. Let me stop sharing my screen. Um, let's see. Okay, so I just want to show those screen brush stopped. Okay. Okay, are we back to the regular screen? Yes. Volume good. Okay, so I just want to share those things because whether you love Taylor Swift, whether you believe in the Bible, whether you believe in any of these things, the fact of the matter is, is that Taylor Swift started in the music industry as a pretty squeaky clean person, and now she is ha has things in her videos. She has an actual witch ritual happening on her stage in her concert. It's a the song is called Willow, and um. And those song is about witchcraft. She has, um, there are things on her tweets and here I'll read a couple of them really quick. Um, that she, okay. So which school at which school um, wrote, this is fun. We welcome Taylor Swift to our tribe. Taylor Swift's post, which is be like, sometimes I just want to listen to music while pining away, sulking, staring out a window. It's me. I'm witches. Never fear. The Willow Lonely Witch remakes is here. And then another one, she says, ever find yourself waiting for a, a signal and meeting someone after dark and happening upon a majestic coven in the woods? Me neither. But do you want your, your music to make you feel like that? then the Willow Moonlight Witch version is for you. And that's the song that we just saw on stage where they were all doing the witchcraft on stage. That is the song Willow. She keeps pointing towards witchcraft through Willow. So Taylor Swift, regardless of how you love her, you don't like her, whatever, you believe that Satan is real. You believe that there's a spiritual war happening, whether you believe in these things or not. She started as a pretty squeaky clean person and is now ventured into having actual witchcraft enactments on stage. And people are liking it. Children are seeing this and liking it. It's promoting witchcraft. Um, in the Bible, it's called sorcery. God says to stay away from sorcery. And he even lists sorcery as one of the things, one of the traits that will be of the people that are part of the second death. It is not a light thing. You look at, you look at Disney, you look at the witchcraft that keeps getting, you know, subtly put in front of our children's faces. There's a huge push towards witchcraft. Um, and it's just really interesting. But Taylor Swift is covered in snakes. She has the snake as her as her basically her her emblem. And then she's pulling witchcraft, which is serve Satan. The snake is Satan. So um I just want parents and people to know that Taylor Swift may have a lot of money and she may have a lot of influence and pull in the world, but how, where is it coming from and what are we accepting? Like, what are we allowing into our society? What are we allowing our children to watch? What are we allowing to be pushed forward? She may be is someone that people grew, um, felt like she's safe and trustworthy and when she goes around in public she dresses pretty decent she looks pretty clean cut 
But then you see this stuff in her stages and her performance. And this should be alarming to parents. If you think that witchcraft is a light thing and witches aren't real, then maybe you haven't come to truly understand that Satan is real and we are in a spiritual battle. And Satan is definitely pushing hard for everyone, but especially our children, especially our children. And, um, and I pray for Taylor, for Taylor Swift daily. Like this isn't a thing to be like, Oh, Taylor Swift is a horrible person. We need to boycott her. And you know, this whole woke movement stuff, that's not, that's not how God teaches us to be either. Taylor Swift has somehow progressively been deceived more and more to where she is getting power. She's getting, uh, you know, a lot of attention, a lot of things from going into this vein of, um, of deception. And she too, God's trying to reach her. So I, you know, pray for her and pray for her children. Beyonce, I'm going to share my screen one more time and show you guys one more picture. Um, there's, there's lots of things. There are, mm, 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 mm. can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, oh, and that's the, these are her posts where she's talking about feeling like a witch, the moot, the uh, willow. So here's Beyonce. So here's Isis. And Isis was the Egyptian goddess. But Isis, you know, kind of progressed into a lot of worship that you see even in modern Christianity. And you see Beyonce here with very clearly a bull dress on, you know, a cow dress and the bull horns with the moon in between, which is a definite homage to Isis. Um, and so the point I want to make is that it may seem like people are being forward or avant-garde in the music industry, but it's so interesting that the, as you see people progress and grow up the ladder in fame and success, that they keep coming to these ends that point back to false gods, false worship. Um, and things that are very, very biblical. Whether you've read the Bible or whether you haven't read the Bible, if you read the Bible, you will come to see that God warns of these things. And the, these are the things that, that lead, lead us into lies that separate us from God. And the world right now is unraveling. And it's because we keep allowing things to come between us and god we don't know who god is we don't know who satan is if the world knew that satan was real and that he was a danger they would not be okay with these things that are happening we've become desensitized and we need to wake up and we need to pray for each other so that's why i'm bringing these things up today because billions of people are following taylor swift and following the the hype and the excitement of all these things while allowing these messages of witchcraft and satanic occult images to be fed to their children without without any fear that it's going to harm them and that for me is is um scary you know i we gotta really again take a step back and, and look at it as this is a spiritual thing that's going on and this is a spiritual war and you really if you understood the truth of what's going on, these like people like Taylor Swift or Eminem or Britney Spears, they're just trauma based mind control slaves. They're literal slaves to not like only just actual slaves through trauma and creating alters personalities, but for certain functions, but also they're slaves to this system. And so we need to really look through the lens of love and treat everyone with love and respect. And realize sin begets sin. This is a sin problem and that we shouldn't be like persecuting people. In fact, I wanted to bring that up is to me, I see with like with Kim Kardashian and others calling Taylor Swift a snake. This is, this is totally contrived. If you just look at it for what it is, this is all, this was all planned. <laughs> 
Like, this was all completely planned. There's nothing organic about it. And you know what that tells me? That that all these people that were calling Taylor Swift a snake and all that, and this whole thing that's manifesting, is they're all filled with serpents. They're all demonically possessed. The entire world has surrendered themselves to the serpent. You see 1.4 billion people that have viewed, or at least there's 1.4 billion views. Billions of people listen to Taylor Swift. These all these people, in some way, shape, or form, through actions, what they listen to, and what they put in their body, have surrendered themselves to the seed of the serpent. And you're just seeing a manifestation through the worship of this priestess on the, the platform, worshiping that giant snake idol. And so when I see this, I see this as a total trap as well. Guys, like, again, this is all planned out. This was, this is totally contrived. And you see that Satan wants people. Like, I think people should know the truth of the Illuminati, the satanic agenda and whatnot. But we're, we're dealing with like 70 chess. Satan is way ahead of this. He's already, he knew the truth was going to get out there. So he's like, you know what? The truth's going to get out there. I want people to know about Satanism. I want people to know about like the Luciferian and like communistic and Nazi agendas that are completely Luciferian and occultic. I want people to get upset. I want the conservative Christian right to get upset. I want them to know about this, to make it so ex intense and extreme. You look at all these music videos, completely satanic and evil and the attack of the children uh, and, and all throughout the world. This is to manipulate. This is a huge manipulation of the conservative right and the Christian world as a whole to create a new world order of false Christianity, Baal worship. And that's what you're seeing right now. Satan wants the cult to be well known so that way he can manifest the false Luciferian Christianity that he's building up. And that's the that's how I see things, and so I don't know what your guys' thoughts are. I I just I'm look I'm trying to take a step back and look at the big picture from the great controversy as we see it in God's word, and that's how I see it. I totally uh, agree with you. It's it's I I am uh, more amazed uh, as the years continue to to go by, right? Um, where I have seen things that were reserved in the realm of the occult show up in plain sight, in in especially in you know in movies or in pop culture such as music, music videos, uh, and even on YouTube, you know things that that show up. Um, I think I mentioned uh, this before, but there. there uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the the talent shows that are popular. So you have like America's Got Talent, you got Britain Got Talent, and all these things. And often you will see uh, uh, a, a person performing a, a, a magic trick, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing in there. And the magic trick uh, that they do, usually, uh, Usually the people who do the magic tricks, for some reason or another, they are either they have it tattooed on themselves, whatever, they have the the, the eye, the all seeing eye, the Osiris eye, you know, that that eye that you see on the top of the dollar bill, right? Uh, with the pyramid. Yeah, so you have the incomplete pyramid and then the eye on top. So these people have that either tattooed on their bodies or 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 somewhere in there. And they perform these, you know, incredible magic tricks that are, you know, so amazing, you know. Uh, so I find it that they are actually performing, um, you know, like witchcraft right in front of your eyes. But people think, oh, it's a trick. Somehow it's, it's a trick, whatever. But in reality is that these guys are actually, they have already, and I, you know, I've said this before, but this is real. This is real. They have sold their souls to the devil for faith. They have actually, they have actually made a contract, right, that they will reject Christ, and that they will follow. They will have 
Satan as their master. And that's why they are where they are, um, because they have been elevated to that position. That is not a coincidence. And a lot of people don't believe in this stuff. They don't believe that that's even possible uh, because they they think that that's just, oh, you know, that's just hearsay. It's it's actually very, very quite, quite real. In the case of in the case of um, Beyonce, it was interesting. Uh, people forget that Beyonce was was in um, in a um, when she was starting out. She was she was in a video. Uh, she had a video. I think it was crazy, crazy in love, whatever. And she was just starting out, and there was a, a scene in there where um, there's a car explosion or something like that. But the guy that was in it with her. That was Jay Z. It was Jay Z the, the the one that the 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 person who she eventually married was there. So actually, in that video, if you go back to it, you know where you see the car explosion or whatever, there was actually that was actually a ritual where she, there was a transformation that that the old Beyonce, mm -hmm. right, that was not in the occult, died, and then a new the new Beyonce of this, the occult came out of it. You know, so that's just another, that was another ritual, another way where, where she had just basically said, you know, oh, I accept, <laughs> I accept the proposal, um, which is, you know, I, I accept, you know, to follow the, the dark side. So this is, this is, um, it's out there. And I, and Kim, I'm, I'm glad that you brought this up because the, the children are the ones who are being targeted. They're they're the primary targets from these uh, uh, from these artists. They're the ones because these are the you know the, the the generation that's coming up. They grow up idolizing these these people, um, and that's the point of it. It's if if you go and you say, oh Taylor Swift is you know I, I like Taylor Swift, I like her music. And all these things, and the kids are listening to these things. You know, when they grow up, what do you think that when they grow up, what they're going to be gravitating towards? They're going to gravitate towards the occult, to witchcraft, to um, to these things that the, the the pagan you know rituals, whatever these things that actually are forbidden in scripture. But it's it is so again, it is hidden. It's a hidden agenda, uh, and and Satan is not coming out like saying oh this is of the devil type thing but he's but he's showing you that it is him by showing you the snakes and all these things he's showing you where, where it's from you know the origin of it and you know and people just dismiss it as just artistic expression you know when in reality this is this is a sign that a you know this is this is of the enemy um I want to point out one thing too about that there is an interesting correlation, and I I find this correlation interesting. Why? There's an interesting correlation between music, right, the music industry, and the uh, the occult, or you know, Satanism and all these things. Satan was, in fact, uh, before when he was Lucifer, before he was a fallen angel, he was a choir leader. In heaven, he had he God gave him a gift of music uh, to, to where he was leading the the entire choir, the, the orchestra, or whatever you could call it in heaven, um, leading the praises in heaven of God. So Satan himself has no such thing or two about you know music and you know good music and things like that. So I find it interesting that in the entertainment industry, you have prominent musicians to come out who have a talent or a voice, uh, or like you just have a, they're talented people who are very talented with their voice. They're somehow uh, lured or like recruited, let's say, um, into this into this dark side. So you have many people who are Taylor Swift grew up Christian. She's she's a she grew up in the Bible Belt, um, you know. I believe she grew up in Nashville, if I remember right. She's from Nashville, um, so she went to church. She knows the Bible, all of these things. So she's aware of everything that we're talking about here. She's all aware of that. But what happens? She got it. She has a talent. She had a talent, and then 
she's recruited and now she's a tool for the enemy you know and, and it's it's once again you know Zach called it slavery I agree with that it's a it's a form of uh, they're, they're doing a job uh, promoting an agenda that's dark and is supposed to bring the entire world into a conflict at the end of the, uh, at, at the end of, of, of time to where you know occultism and witchcraft all this is going to be a normal thing that's that's eventually what Satan wants he wants to be worshipped as God and we're moving closer and closer to, towards that end so again I am not exactly surprised by this I I, I did know actually Kim about these videos because I don't really follow Taylor Swift but no. uh, I am, but I am just like I I did know that she had this, this kind of videos and that and that video that you showed about the um, I think the willow the witchcraft on stage you know that was that's shocking so that that tells me right there that she had made it she has made a decision on her own um, that she has actually said, oh, you know what? This has been offered to me. And she accepted the offer. And I think that that's why she, that's what she is now. Yeah, I think that um, she's definitely made a contract or an agreement. Um, but I also think that even though she was raised Christian and how well she does or doesn't know the Bible or whatever, I feel like as an experience we all go through, there's a, we're, you know, I was raised Christian, but there's a difference between being a raised Christian and actually find like being born again and finding Christ for yourself. And I don't feel like she has had that experience because if she did, I don't think that if you had that experience, you truly knew Jesus that you can sell out to the dark side because you know that he's better. So I still truly believe <clears throat> that God's love is so great. And I've heard testimonies. I've heard testimonies from warlocks who were talking to Satan face to face, who were casting spells on people, who were trying to kill people that were converted to Christianity and saved by God. I've heard stories of clairvoyance. I've heard, you know, I like to watch testimonies of people that went really dark into the abyss and were saved by Jesus. Some of them found, like, were kind of led step by step to him. And some of them is just like, doesn't even make sense. It's kind of like salt. Saul and Paul, right? Like Saul was out persecuting Christians and then Jesus came to him on the road to Damascus and and met him you know face to face and and he knew. Like and part of that I believe comes through our prayer for people and not giving up on people because God doesn't give up on us. And I really believe that you know Taylor any one of these people that have made it to this place, if they found Jesus and they turned, like, of course, they have the whole world against them. But even Illuminati's people high up in some of these chains. Zach, you shared that one guy's testimony that was born into the Illuminati family and had them like out. They were like literally lined up to kill him. And he found Jesus and and Anubis, the Egyptian god, was there and and they they couldn't do anything to him they have the protection of jesus and that's when i knew that god's power is used to restrain evil evil can't fight against it if any of these people found jesus christ and truly turned to him and put their faith in him he can protect them from everything they've signed their life into i know he can i've heard testimonies of people but we need to find jesus and we need the bible and we need to keep sharing our testimonies and pointing people back to God, the only true God. Worship God, the creator of heaven and earth. Revelation chapter 14. So that you are not, stop worshiping the beast. Stop worshiping Satan. Stop giving your affection to idols, to people. People are worshiping Taylor Swift. I used to listen to, when I was in high school, you know, I used to listen to corn and tool and uh aerosmith and you know like i mean tool was freaking took a rib out to give to do things and he put it on his cd you know it was a kid like don't even understand that i look back at that stuff now and it creeps me out i used to be obsessed with marilyn manson i loved lana del rey i liked all the music and 
And as I went down that chain, I grew very far from God. But, but, but Kim, I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt that, but no, you're fine. I, I think that there is a, a difference between um, those who are generally deceived, you know, and those who actually make a commitment, uh, you know, an open commitment. And, and, and I want to oh, oh, say to anyone listening, even if you're deep in the darkness, you can still repent. However, there is, there is, a, a, there is a difference maker is that, for example, like the choice is given. So Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Jay-Z, The Rock, all of these guys can actually turn even now, even though they made a contract to Christ. However, what they have to do is it's, it's, it's given a choice. Is if, if given the choice to them, it's kind of like this. Well, you will turn to Christ, you know, and he will take you out of it. But that will mean that you will lose all these, this wealth, all this fame, and you'll just become a regular Joe. Will you be okay with that? And many of them will, will prefer, weirdly enough, they will prefer the worldly riches. And this is, I want to I wanna say to you that this is the definition of idolatry. Like idolatry is just putting something, anything, you know, above God. So they're saying that, I prefer this over God. And this is what got them there. And this is what will keep them there if they continue. Uh, so, and I think that's different. There's a difference between the person who, who knows and has a made a choice, right? That this is it and this is not. Not that they're, they're not beyond hope in the sense that God cannot deliver them. But, it, but it, it's, it's just they have chosen they're who they're gonna follow, and God gives that gives them that right, and they're gonna have to reap the consequences. I'm gonna say that, but you know, but that I just wanted to say there's a difference between being deceived and making a choice. Hundred percent. But Solomon's a really good example because he actually knew God, like he trusted God, he loved God, he helped build the temple, and then life took him into idolatry, and he went super far off track to where you would think God. There's no way God would forgive you for all the things you've done. He bringing offered his children to false gods. He married, you know, he got into dark stuff. And, and in the end, if a heart is willing to repent, and like he said, that means that you have to exchange the vanities of this world for God. But when you come to know who God is and that all of those things that you have are, are really God's anyways, all the riches you have, hoarding them, they're really gods. They're meant for us to, to, you know, share and give with one another and take care of each other. They're not meant to be hoarded. Um, then, then that changes. And this is the process of coming to know God. And, and the thing too, though, and like, I love, I love the way God works. Cause like when I hear testimonies of like people that are in witchcraft or warlocks or, you know, as they're trying to cast spells on people, as they're trying to, you know, work with and that the one dude he was you know from a kid he was a warlock he was like working with satan like he actually like would go and do his witchcraft and like sit face to face and talk with him and um and god was able god reached him and saved him and like that to me just like blows my mind completely undeserved and that's how and i'm not saying like that's there's going to, I'm saying that there comes a point where I don't know how it works for everyone. I don't know how or what brings us there, but we all eventually have that place where we have that choice to make. And once that choice comes, that choice, like that choice is over and it's a lifetime of choices, but there's an ultimate choice at some point too. Like for Pilate, he had the choice to make whether he was going to fear men or, or, you know, save Jesus. And he went along with men, even though he didn't agree with it. Like that was part of his choice and his option, you know? So anyways, point is, is like, regardless of everything, the world is getting heavier and heavier into the occult. Our children are being sold. This is becoming more mainstream. If we're not paying attention because we don't like, like I said, I haven't watched anything in a long time. I had no clue when I saw like when I saw all the snakes everywhere. I was like, "What the heck is happening?" 
and I haven't seen Beyonce's videos. I haven't seen any of that stuff. I'm not going to go down those rabbit holes and start looking at everyone's music videos, but understanding that it's becoming more blatant and more in our faces and being mindful and praying for each other because these people that are lost, they need our prayers. And ultimately at the end of the day, we don't know. God is the one that's in control. And it's not for us to say whether someone can still be saved or not be saved, but it is for us to choose whether we could pray for them or not. And I know when I pray for people, it helps me not judge that person. It helps it, like the second I pray for someone, it makes things neutral and it actually causes me to love them and care about their welfare rather than me judging them and thinking what they're doing is wrong. And that changes me. And I know that God uses that to do everything he can to reach people too. It's ultimately their choice who they will serve, but we can pray for them. We can pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to reach people. And, um, and I just think in this day and age where we know that things are getting crazier, we need to be vigilant and watch out and educate our children. Not just, not just tell them, no, you can't watch this. No, you can't be part of any of this because I feel like that causes as many aversions to God as anything but to help explain to them, read the Bible with your children, show them the scriptures, explain to them why we are like that. We really are in a spiritual battle. We need to come to understand that we are in a spiritual battle, because if you don't believe that there is a spiritual realm at war that we are in the middle of, then you're deceived because we in reality are in a spiritual battle. And it, there are signs of the occult everywhere coming for us and coming for our kids. So we can keep pushing it off and pretend like, oh, no, we're just living a human experience. There's none of this other stuff going on. Or we can come to the reality that we are in a spiritual battle and there is a darkness coming for us. And there is a light called Jesus Christ that is more powerful than the darkness that can save us. Where are we going to put our faith? Where are we going to put our trust? Are we going to chase after the things of this world and the vanities that separate us from God? Or are we going to put our faith in God and let him pave the way for us and set the path? And since I've put my life and trust in God, my life has been like, I'm blessed in every area. And I know there's going to come a point where those blessings are going to be attacked by Satan. You know, Job lost all that he had because of Satan's attacks, not God's. And that Job experience may be in our day and age. It's looking like it very well might be, but our faith needs to be in God during those times when it doesn't make sense. But we need to understand we're in a spiritual battle. Otherwise, we're just already lost. And we need to pray for each other. So the point of this video for me is to raise awareness since Taylor Swift is all over the news and that's why I brought up like my parents you know my parent like they you know they think like oh wow and that's the thing kids see like oh these guys are billionaires what are they doing to become a billionaire well if I did that could I become a billionaire too and it makes them more open and the comments I saw on that willow video with the witchcraft it's so sad people think it's cool and they like want to watch it over and over and over again they don't know we don't know. We need to be patient and loving with each other and help each other know because that's half of the battle. Amen. I'm going to start off with what I'm going to say with I, starting Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So ultimately, Satan wants worship. I think that's pretty clear. And how did God get worship in heaven? One of the main ways was through music, was through uh, singing and playing instruments to the glory of God. Satan wants to be like the Most High, so how is he going to do it? He's going to do it through his priests and priestesses as mu musicians who lead the minds of the people to receiving a message. From my experience, listening to music, spirits can speak through music. If you ever have read the Word of God, you can 
see that God speaks to you through his word and he, you know he's saying something to you. He puts it upon your mind and heart and it's almost as if he's there actually speaking to you through his word. Do you not think that Satan can do the same thing through his art, his writings, through his magicians that he works through? He can do the same thing through music. And the spirits will speak to you. And if you are not sober-minded, Satan is a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He will weaken you, and he's weakening the nations, preparing the world, the minds and hearts of the world, to receiving the, the light of Lucifer. But it's not a true light. It's a false light that leads to death and destruction. Right here, I'll continue, verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to the grave, to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon you and consider you, saying, Is that the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Guys, following Satan is a terrible, terrible idea. And as long as we continue to listen to his music, we continue to participate in taking in all his ways of sharing his doctrine, then you are going to follow his path and he's going to lead you to destruction. And you will be outside New Jerusalem alone, thinking in your mind, I gave up eternal life to follow this pathetic weasel. It's all a facade. Yes, he has power. But he has no power to heal the heart, to heal your heart and mind, and to bring you eternal peace, joy, and happiness and freedom. If you're looking for freedom, if you're looking for peace and joy, you can only find that in Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And so I just wanted to say, guys, put good things. You put good things in, you get good out. You put bad things in, you can only reap destruction. God has created certain laws. And it only makes sense, you know. So I, I just highly recommend you read the Word of God. You know, listen to worship music if you like to listen to music. And it's hard. Satan's going to tempt you at every front. But that's where prayer and surrendering yourself daily, asking for the Holy Spirit, will get you. And if you're sincere, if you have a sincere heart, God's going to lead you and help you through repentance, turning away from these lifestyles of watching these satanic movies, listening to the satanic music, looking at the satanic art like comic books and whatnot. And he's going to help you to be aligned with him, his will, and to take in the truth, not the lies that portray with truth or lies mixed with truth, but the pure truth, the, the water of life, the, the bread of life. And you will get stronger. You will be more free. You'll be happier. And that is what Jesus wants for you. And, you know, I just thank God that we have the privilege and honor to share the truth about how wonderful Jesus is and that there is a way out. And so, guys, take heed to this. Um, go to prayer, start reading the Word of God, and turn off that filthy music. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't feed yourself dirt, all right? You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't give yourself poison, even if it has sugar coated on it. So the same thing applies. Which is poison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You, yeah, you want it, yeah, exactly. And so just, just think about it, pray about it, and ask God for the strength to deny your flesh and find better things, good things. And I'll, I'll end it with that. I, I'll add to that that, yeah, it's, it's, uh, when it comes to the spiritual battle, we, we, we have no idea. Uh, we are kind of blinded, or we are blind by our, you know, our desires, and our desires are usually in line with uh, the, the side, you know, the dark side, because we are naturally, um, we are in agreement, you know, by nature, which is, you know, which is which is by default. But in order for us to break away from that, we have to come to a, a point where we surrender our minds, our hearts to the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it is he who begins to 
up in, is still the seed in our hearts to break away from these things. I, I will say that it's you cannot, you will not be, if you're thinking that you're listening to popular music and Taylor Swift, that you're going to just stop listening to it all of a sudden. That's not going to happen like that. It, it happens through uh, when you, be, you become uh, more aligned with the Holy Spirit when it, that, and it is His Spirit that reveals to you uh, the truth about these things. Um, so I also recognize that, you know, you may be hearing this and you may be thinking, oh, you know, that's crazy. But uh, the desire to change in, and that is born from the Holy Spirit. And, it's, and you know, as long as you're reading your, your, your Bible, you're praying to God in a sincere manner, the Holy Spirit will work in your heart to uh, change your habit or change your, your tastes, even for music, your, your taste for um, the things that you watch, the, pro, the shows you see, um, and even, you know, the, the, titles, the type of things that you think of, is the things that you, you, you meditate on. I would say that uh, the riches of this world and people thinking, oh, you know, like, like you know, people being billionaires and things like that, um, that may have its appeal, an appeal in its own. But the reality of it is that, that it's if if we truly have the peace that comes with Christ, you can be happy and you can be satisfied with a little. Not that it is okay. So I want to say that you don't have to be poor in order to be a Christian. I I, I want to say that you don't have to be poor. But even if you're poor. You are happier than the rich person who has billions of dollars. And that's the thing that you have to recognize. The wealth that you have with Christ is so much greater than the wealth that you, you will have with, with the world and with, with all the money. All the money in the world is not going to bring you the happiness that you're seeking. That can only be found in the Holy Spirit. I will also say, um, you know, at the end of this also that, you know, do not neglect uh, intercessory prayer. That is, Kim brought up praying for other people as well. But if you're struggling, and I'm talking about not just praying for others, but if you're in a, in a position to ask for other people to pray for you as well. Uh, I think that the, the, the best story in, in the Bible about this is, is fun, I think, in Mark 2, where you, you see uh, uh, there was a, there was Jesus was preaching and it was crowded and and um, and uh, four friends came and brought their their friend who was paralyzed and they broke the the hole in the roof and, and put him in front of Christ you know because they couldn't through, get through the doors and then Jesus said that when when he saw their faith that is the faith of the friends uh, he not only he forgave the, the the man's sins, but he also healed the person from from his from his uh, uh, from his ailment, and that's that's amazing. So when you have friends or people out there who who are willing to pray for you, you can ask for their um, for their prayers if you're struggling with something uh, to to free you from whatever uh, what we call in you know strongholds, you know that that. That Satan has in your heart, their prayers can really move mountains. They can really move you and help you when you're in a moment of weakness. Because intercessory work, prayer works. Intercessory prayer works because we are each other's priests. And the priest of all believers, as, as a believer, you are, you are also a priest for, for God. And with Christ being our high priest. Uh, that's a, that's a, a study in and of its own. But that's the power that we have and the privilege of, of being a believer in Christ. So if we're struggling with something, you know, I would highly encourage you to seek the prayer of the saints to help you and to ask them to pray on your behalf because that works as well. Um, so I just wanted to point that out there as well. Amen. Thanks, you guys. So I'm just going to close with two scriptures and then um, 
Keith, would you mind saying the closing prayer after? Yeah, I would. Okay, so in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, this is after Jesus ascended to heaven. These letters are written and read. So Jesus is saying, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, which goes into the realms of witchcraft, and idolaters, which is what's happening at her concerts and on stage, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. We need to pray for each other, for the people that all the children, and we need to pray for the influencers. They, as I, I believe, and I agree with Zach, that a lot of these people were born into things. We don't know their situation. They are probably a product of mind control themselves. We all live in the spiritual battle in a time and age where the world is corrupt, very corrupt. We've been born into certain ways of thinking, and we all need truth to be freed from these lies that are holding us back from trusting God. God is the only place that we can find peace, healing, and salvation. And in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The time to come out of these systems is now. And the way to do that is through the Bible, through prayer, and asking God to teach you how to love. We need to learn how to love each other. We need to stop judging one another and love each other. That is the solution to all the problems the world has. If we could just love each other as much as we love ourselves, we don't hurt each other. We don't kill each other. And that love only comes from God. It is not from ourselves. So come out of her. Start trusting God. Worship God. Stop worshiping the systems of this world. That is my prayer for everyone. Thank you, Keith. And we'll have Keith close for us in prayer. Real Thank fast. You, Real fast, guys. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt prompted to say this. Uh, all the Satanists and Luciferians, occultists that are listening to this right now, trauma-based mind control slaves, you don't have to be afraid. Satan is going to throw you under the bus, but you don't have to be afraid. You can give your life to Jesus and you will have peace and eternal life. So just want to, yeah, and protection. So choose Jesus Christ. He's not going to throw you under the bus. Satan will. There's going to be a lot of people Satan throws under the bus in the final moments of earth's history. And so you don't have to be a part of that. You can, you can be a part of the army of Christ and be a wonderful warrior in Christ's army. Anyways, I just want to say that. Warrior of love. Warrior of love and truth. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I just remembered what you said, Zach, and kind of remind me something, a point I wanted to make. Uh, what, what is the purpose of, uh, you know, Taylor Swift and Beyonce and all these things? What is the purpose of them leading the world this way? That's right. You may be asking that. Um, and I'm going to give you the answer, like, you know, straight up. Satan wants to make no and void the sacrifice of Christ. He knows you, you are valuable because Christ, the creator of the entire universe, died for you. So what he's attempting to do, he wants to take as many people with him down because he, he knows that his time um, is coming. You know, what retribution against what he has done is irreversible. He has no hope. He wants to bring, deceive people into thinking that there is nothing else out there beyond this world and that they should, so that they should partake uh, with him in, in, in their destruction. So that's, that's really what he's doing. So it's, he's willing to, to, to share the world with you because the world does, is, is not worth anything anymore, you know. It's so he's willing to do that in exchange for you to give up the true riches that you have in Christ. So that's really what he wants. He doesn't want Christ 
to basically win win you over so that he he can so that you can take this place that he left you know away in in glory with god that's what he wants so if you're wondering like why why is he going through all of this you know has his people to deceive the world you know it seems like a, a elaborate plan right that's because he has nothing to get to to win anymore and in he's a okay when in football, when you when you talk about football, when you have teams that are playing for the playoffs, right? You have teams that are spoilers. You you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. These teams that are like one and sixteen or something like that that they can never make it. But you just need that one win, right, to get into the playoffs, right? So you have a, a spoiler team in there. If you lose to these teams, you won't make it, right? That's that's the role that Satan is playing right now. He's playing the, the role of spoiler uh, because you already have victory in Christ. It's actually given to you. It's, it's, it's all but there for you to just take it. But he's there to like get in there, deceive you out of it so that, so that Christ, he's, he's actually not, you're not actually the, the thing that he's looking for. He wants to hurt Christ, uh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, so, and, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I also think that God has always given Satan a choice. And I think Satan's choice is prideful and selfish in that I'd rather have this world, you know, take reign of the earth and have the worship of this earth for a short period of time rather than surrender and worship God and admit that I was wrong and worship God for all eternity. I think that that consistently is Satan's choice to, you know, he's, he's seen the whole thing. He's seen it from beginning to end. He's seen the love of God. He knows it. And he's seen, you know, and God consistently gives Satan and the fallen angels more and more time to change. And, you know, they could repent too, but I think they keep choosing. No, I'd rather, I would rather be a God for right now and, and have my pride and eat my cake right now then surrender and worship God because he doesn't understand love. He doesn't understand peace, joy. He just wants, you know, the, exactly what we're seeing in the world, that same nature. I, I'd rather, I'd rather accrue and, and hoard and have everything to myself than freely share and love and, and, you know, commune with people. It's foreign. It's a foreign thing when you're not in it. And the people who, who would go down with him actually have the same mindset as he does. Because they're because, allowing him in their mind. I mean, they, 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 are, they are in agreement with Satan's principles of selfishness, of uh, total control, and of me first and you last. I mean, that's just the, that's just the, the principle. And everyone who agrees with him are going to go, go down that path. So, and I used to be that person, and Jesus is better. Amen. Way and Jesus better. is better. Jesus, Jesus is way, way better. better. Infinitely better. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your goodness, for your love, and your kindness, for allowing us to um, have and experience your love through your word through your Holy Spirit, through your people. And I just want to ask in a special way, first of all, thank you. I want to thank Kim for bringing this, uh, this topic uh, to our attention. Um, I, want to thank, I want to thank Zach for uh, his insights um, regarding this topic. Lord, we're, we're living in a, in a very interesting time in the world where uh the the secular is being commingled with the spiritual and by spiritual i mean the realm of the occult in a way that is now becoming the the secular and, and the spiritual are now becoming uh more commonplace and this is this is a dangerous time because many deceptions will come out of this however um we know that through your Holy Spirit, we're able to discern any and all deceptions. 
we're protected from whatever witchcraft uh, that the Satan may throw at us. We may fall victims to some of the deceptions, and that's okay because you're able to pick us up. Lord, I just want to pray um, in a special way for those who are still in that valley of decision that they, they want, they realize where they are in, in their spiritual journey, um, but they have no idea how to um, find their way to you. I want to pray for them, Lord. I want to pray that your Holy Spirit touches their hearts, lead them to the scriptures, lead them to uh, a knowledge of you, of, of what you have done, so that they too can realize the love that they have in you, in Jesus. And that that love is so much greater than anything um, that can be attained in this world. I also want to pray for those who are actively, you know, involved in witchcraft, actively involved in uh, the occult, actively involved or, you know, to think that, yeah, you know, the way of Satan is the way um, that you reveal yourself to them and make them see that you are so much better. Um, your ways are so much greater and have such a, a profound impact uh, on not just them, but on the people around them. Uh, that they will just realize the goodness and see that this is that this is the way to go, so that they may renounce their activity and instead turn to you. We have many examples of that, and I just pray, Lord, that you move in a special way, in a powerful way, through your Holy Spirit, to make that happen for them. And Lord, I just want to pray for ourselves, you know, this ministry for Kim, for Zach, for myself. Uh, in, in this ministry, Lord, that you help us to um, grow closer and closer to you and be able to share whatever knowledge we have and also to be able to stand in for those who, who, we, who we know need our help uh, spiritually so that they too can come to a knowledge of Christ. Lord, we love you. We thank you for just blessing us just to just bringing us together and blessing us with the knowledge that we have. And may, may we continue to, uh, to grow in you and, uh, and to share it as much as we can. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.